Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Sarah Chu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Before I start today, I want to show you uh, my usual slides uh, explaining my research it's because it has been a couple of weeks that I haven't shown it. Okay, um, I believe that there is only one human language and we share one single core. And it is more than 20 years of my research. And in the last 30 something years, I've been traveling around you know searching for the connection between all languages and this is the picture of the basket starfish because I believe that all languages are related no language is really isolated and no language is above the others that's why we share one core as long as you believe that a language share one core you won't look at each other with we won't look at each other with hierarchy because a tree actually presents the idea of hierarchy so um, and the point is that uh, I'm, I'm a woman from the East, so this research actually shows you some different point of view from a feminine, uh, feminine perspective and from an Asian. And hopefully uh, I can get my points across. Okay, um, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, this is Sarah Chiu. Uh, tonight I'm going to continue uh, what I have been talking in the past uh, several weeks and uh, the importance of age, of course. And tonight I'm going to concentrate a little bit in how uh, the female share of the uh, whole heritage, human heritage, has been eliminated and hidden away. And uh, you will see that through my slides. And once again, you know, I apologize. I have to go really fast because I have only 27 minutes to do the whole thing. Uh, that's why I have uh, uploaded it in YouTube. So if you uh, cannot follow me in certain way, you can always type in the YouTube, you know, uh, the program of my name, Basket Starfish, our language call, you can uh, watch it again, you know. Okay, so I will start with today's slides. <clears throat> okay. Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about the hidden and silenced female threat and the cavity. As uh, last time I already showed you what about the, the cavity. And first of all, this is a cover of a book. And uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, biologically, the umbilical cord is actually extended. This is actually the seam uh, fiber that extended to form this cavity itself. So the umbilical cord is very, very closely linked to this cavity. The ancient since the deal with uh, fertility and birth a lot so they seem to understand this much better than the modern man so um, I show you some words to uh, prove you know how the itch is so connected to all these ideas again the ancient uh, uh, Greek legends you know always have this you know Eho uh, uh, they refer it to the blood of God or immortal they believed it is a single uh, line you know through the body of the immortal it's some kind of blue in color so that's why you see this blue actually happens in a lot of cultures, you know, because they believe this blue line and blue blood. And, and also it appears, you know, in the uh, Jewish, you know, uh, ritual show as well. They pay a lot of attention to those tassels and the blue line running across it. And then um, the other thing is that, um, as you can see, this is the... Uh, Thing in reality. So you see the umbilical cord, you know, actually after the baby has got out, it is actually, you know, a bag, something like a bag itself. And of course, in biology, you still call it a uh, Korean. And this is because, you know, uh, the English uh, transcription spells it like that, and people actually take it as the K. And then uh, in reality, if you look back to the uh, Greek word, it is exactly the same word like this here. It is, should be pronounced as Korean, okay? It's a guttural sound and and this is also directly linked to a lot of ancient writing as here I give you the hieroglyph you know even the vulva and also a, a point of water is uh, sharing the same sound as hum and I show you a lot of hum sound like uh, the English word HUMP2 is all uh, related to a bulb shape and also uh, in Arabic and Chinese they all related to something about pregnancy 
so I want to show you, you know, all this, you know, cavity and a lot of the worship. Uh, we actually abstractly uh, worshiping this kind of a doom, a hum, uh, which is the uh, that cavity itself in various form. Sometimes you can understand as a female worm. Sometimes you can understand it as the breast itself. So it is very natural uh, when I lived in Yemen, you know, in the desert. Whenever you see that shape, you somehow know that you can go and get the life saving water you can have water right there so in the ancient time you know you don't really need writing to convey your message and uh, also you know as uh, time uh, passes by you can see that all the religious building will somehow you know perfected that same shape you know with this little point right there you can look at it in a different way uh, you can look at it as a source you can look at it as the symbol of the Sun you can also look at it as a nipple you can also look at it as the umbrella part of, a, of the body so um, I show you all this you know in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph they bear you know the, this to bear the hum sound and you will see that the um, the breath itself is drawn somehow drawn in the same shape and of course this is a universal shape which has a lot of reading itself but you can understand it as the Sun you can also understand as a water fountain the spring as well okay so either it's the Sun or the water and then this is actually a uh, writing itself in South Arabic, you know, if you turn it the uh, horizontally, it will become a P in ancient uh, hieroglyph. And if you stand it straight, this is an F in ancient um, South Arabic, you know, both of it is linked to the word, you know, mouth, you know. So this is the mouth where baby came out, okay. So that's why, you know, even in the church, you will see this constantly uh, uh, appearing. And of course, you know, everybody will tell you a different thing. But but this has a long, long tradition, you know, up to the ancient time. And Jesus is always appear, uh, you know, in front of this kind of light uh, thing. And then when you go to the church, there is a little hump right there. And you call it the apse. The apse is always, you know, a little bul bulging empty cavity. And then Jesus will appear in this shape right there. There's always actually a hidden female behind all these, okay? And um, again, I want to show you even in different uh, ancient religion, you know, the females are totally hidden. And um, this is what, whenever you see that in Hindu, you will see that you will say it's a lingam, it's, it's, it's a male part, but actually, you know, the most important thing where the God, the Shiva really comes out is actually the female part, and including the Buddhism, you know, and also um, the um, Muslim and Islam, you know, when you go to Mecca, you know, you, you do the, the Hajj, you know the pilgrimage you know people will circle around the center and and of course, you know, in the center, you saw that uh, thing you know, uh, as uh, a phallic shape. But uh, actually, the worship, the most worship part is actually at the corner of the, that piece of square stone. And, and look at the shape of this, you know, they all correspond to each other. And of course, you know, even in sound, you know, the people who make this link to the pilgrimage is called Hajja. And then um, the whole uh, succession of the Imams, you know, will be called Khalifa. Khalifa, you know, but then in English again, you know, you pronounce it as Khalifa. Uh, so uh, this actually means successor of the uh, of the uh, Prophet Muhammad. So this is all about the lineage, the heritage. But uh, in this case, you know, they all become male heritage, and the female has to totally uh, hidden. You know, the matriarchal society has gone from our normal site. And uh, okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit because I think I. I stress too much on the age and I this time I want to give you a brief introduction about the, the, the linkage between the H and the S and Z shape and sound okay because you know whenever you see the thread they are always you know, in the in, in almost a whole world's uh, system the writing system or speech system either the thread or the link will always use the H uh, sound or they will go to the S or the Z sound okay Okay, so um, these are 
to do Roman uh, mosaic, you know, as border. Why do you always see this thread, this line as the border? Because they are all symbol of fertility in ancient time. And of course, you know, I show you H, you know, this is the hieroglyph you have seen many times. And um, I show you this, this is actually a two ply thread. So I will show you the South Arabic. This is the uh, H uh, symbol, you know, in this ancient script. And this is Chinese, you know, you will see that this is a three ply thread that's why I show you one two and one three so the ancient were actually using all kinds of make uh, threading trailing technique to express themselves so the Chinese also as, as an H sound high and then the South Arabic you know they have uh, tons of H sound and and you will see this the South Arabic like this this is a very precisely this is a two ply thread this is a three ply thread okay and then the Greek, you know, took on this part. This is also the trailing movement. This is a her sound as well. And then uh, in Old Hungarian, you will see that this is an H sound. All this line is H sound, okay? Now I show you exactly the same uh, symbol like this one. But in this case, in South Arabic, look at this. South Arabic, this is H, this is an H. But in this case, South Arabic, this is an S, okay? So on the second line, you will see, I will show you all the S or the Z sign, okay? And this is hieroglyph. You will see that this is the sin shin sound. Okay, look at that. This is also uh, the trailing movement. A lot to do with the rope, the tie, the thread. Okay, and this is Chinese. Look at that. This is uh, this has a sound of sin or sin. Okay, and very obviously we are trailing threads in two ply thread into one thread. Okay, and then this is old Hungarian. You see this one uh, also. You know is the splitting. So uh, of course. You know, when you talk about fertility, it's always about the lineage and also about the end split of the, the thread, you know, that comes with fertility. So, uh, I want to point out that, uh, as far as I can see, tons of words they always have polar meaning either they mean unite or they mean split, you know. Not only in this case, a lot of other words, you know, sometimes they go to, to too extreme. This is the uh, amazing fact of our human uh, understanding. Our brain seem to have a very very amazing ability to, to understand all polar meaning without clashes so um, you will see that I will show you a, a number from here I will show a number of old Hungarian uh, symbol you see um, all this Actually, uh, as far as I can see, these are all something to do with thread. Can you see the similarity between um, this one and the South Arabic? And this is one single thread itself. And this is uh, the, a three ply thread mount, uh, splitting into two or three also. And, and you see, obviously, these are two threads right there. It's very much like the uh, ancient Hebrews H sound. So. Um, uh, according to this, you know, I started to do research. So I type in all this sound, I just make up spelling myself using this as the initials, you know. So if the ancient hung, uh, Hungarian people use this as a spelling uh, alphabet, so I use the same sound to type in the computer. Actually, it ended up that all the th words about threads are all started with this or this or this or this. And actually this actually is, has a lot to do with lineage. You can see very clearly is this the line. And what about this one, which seems to be uh, implied is thicker thing. It actually means a lock. So uh, for, because for more than men, when I say a lock, you immediately think of metal. But I will show you what a lock was like. This is actually Tutankhamun's uh, lock to his tomb. Can you see that a lock was actually made of ropes at the very beginning? So uh, no wonder this is also a lock. And then even now, you know, even it turned into a wire. This is your bicycle lock. You know, this also you can understand it as a wire and thread too. Okay. So, um, and also the sound is very interesting. Uh, the Hungarian word for lock is saw. And then the Chinese Cantonese pronunciation for lock is saw. Okay. Um, and I can actually uh, sound and sound and, and they are all match with each other. Either in writing is match, either in sound is match. This is across thousands of miles and we see different culture. I'm talking about Chinese and Hungarian. So um, this points to the ancient, ancient language core that we all share, okay? And um, 
of course you know in interestingly you know the H because it is this fertility thread as I show you again why Sarai actually was added with an H become Sarah with an H at the end H and S always add to the end to mean this uh, to bring in this endless list in the lineage and it also become fertility and that's why S also become a plural as we understand it these days okay so um, again you know uh, another day I will explain the S word um, more clearly but today I want you to see quickly why the S why the Z because it has a lot to do with the technique of uh, trailing thread uh, in order to make a strong thread you have to uh, trail two different threads together one they call the S trail the other one they call Z uh, trail when you combine the two together like this and then it become a very strong thread so as modern men do not have this knowledge anymore so we actually do not get the language very well as the ancients do okay so um, now I'll go back to uh, what I have been doing you know with the, 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 the H sound and first of all and how they uh, take away all the females uh, symbol of heritage okay and, and from the cow change to the worship of the bull okay again you will have no difficulty seeing all this Egyptian sign they were all worshiping this cow and but then gradually you know they introduced this, this car and then they started telling you that uh, the, the Jewish people were worshiping a young calf and and then that's what when the whole world started to pay attention to the male lineage okay so uh, but then uh, they didn't pay much attention to the same uh, symbol this same symbol other than pronounced as ka as either part of the soul it has another pronunciation as ich okay again this guttural each sound and if you look at the hieroglyph itself you know this actually share very uh, similar you know sound and this is the, the the thread the fertility thread and that's why you know sometimes you do call a cow a hiver a hiver is actually the fertility thread that carry on by the cow so each culture actually preserve part of the ancient core so we cannot understand our whole human language uh, by separating all our languages it can on we can only understand the real language you know by combining all all of us together not by separating us into families okay and again I want to show this you know again this is the R sound of you know the cow and but it, uh, point to the female but then again you know it become the alpha become this very strong olive alpha it is totally monopolized by the uh, male itself again and the age of Ares you know the god of war and this become the bull itself so you will see that the matrilinear uh, world actually is slowly slowly taken over by the patrilinear world so the world uh, after the A become very very dominant you know the, the A started to lead the alphabetic cycle and that's the time when the world turned into a patriarchal society and then I will show you also you know according to because I want to show you what the calf was uh, at that time so um, uh, the Jewish has this you know the L the Elohim uh, become the God and at that, this time you understand gradually actually uh, at the beginning the Elohim is a plural still you can say that the male and the female still included inside but then um, uh, as time went by you know uh, they only present the male part we understand them only as Adonai as very male male God you know and then uh, you can see that this Aleph is actually come from this bull as I said but you know if you go back into the Bible the word calf when they said the the Jewish people worship the calf they actually use this word this is a very very feminine uh, pubic triangle I uh, right there uh, it is not they didn't use the the, the, the a very male R right there even though they use both as a vowel but they use a very feminine I right there so you can be sure that at that time you know I'm not sure whether it's a real calf or or, or is actually um, the female element it was very, still very very strong but uh, they gradually shifted more and more to the strong uh, a aggressive a okay so I uh, come back to the Egyptian world you know as you can see you know I want to show you how uh, from the Greek culture they start to hide all the H sign in each symbol and this was originally can you see this sign right there this was originally uh, read uh, 
uh, should be read as harp or, or harpy. And then when it become uh, Greek itself, the H disappear. It become Arpis, okay? And as you know, later on, you know, in the Greco-Egyptian world, they worship this Serapis. So this is actually a combination of the Sera and the Arpis, you know? And then, the, but they present a completely martial image, you know, to the world. But uh, there's some, something very important. Uh, they, she, he's actually wearing the heart of Inanna. Uh, a few weeks ago, I showed you uh, the the head of Inanna, the which who become Ishtar later. That female goddess actually wear a head that has a plant, has a flower. So he's still wearing that, you know. But you will see the image completely turned into a male. And then uh, in the museum of Berlin, there is also uh, this statue. They said this is the high priest of the Serapis, you know, because they 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 worship this bull and look at this flower she he's wearing the flower of this Ishtar or Inanna so this flower will become very important I if I have time you know I this today I can get that to that flower which is very important in as a symbol but this is definitely a very female sign right there but uh, I want to show you this other than taking away the H become Apis and then also I told you the, from the Hebrew Hava and then it also uh, uh, took away the H sound, it become Eve itself, you know, so uh, all the female H is completely gone. And then um, this slide shows you the silence female heritage, as I said, um, this become Apis, the happy become Apis, Hava become Eve, and uh, they hide the H, and uh, I will show you in the uh, uh, Jewish world, there are two, you know, they summarize it into two. There are actually many, many H signs, and there's the Jewish world summarized into two. This one is the thread, and this one is actually uh, a point, you know, vaguely to the female hair, and, and here, right there. But uh, I will continue on uh, later. But I want to show you in the Greek world, they also, and Hera is written, it's still written, but then they told you the H has no sound, become the E. Uh, and and then Latin they write the H but the H no longer carry a sound and and it was only in in German that it's pre uh, that it preserved the H sound and only in English that the H sound came back but you can see that if you look at it you can still also see an H at the beginning H at the end the here also H at the beginning H at the end okay and then also the Chinese world as I told you a few weeks ago this is the monopolized by the Emperor Emperor. and he claimed that he's the um this is the emperor i the royal i he monopolized it no one can use that anymore and you can see that the thread is right there he is the receiver of that divine thread but then uh, no longer uh, we no longer know how exactly it was pronounced because you know he forbidden people to pronounce it and but when everything was silenced a lot of cheeky thing can be done okay so if i go i show you the ancient egyptian uh, world this hay and hay both means uh, eternity and also fertility and abundance. It's always have an edge at the beginning, edge at the end. And and exactly like the Hebrew, they still have this H at the beginning, H at the end to mean life and to be alive. And then um, the very, very word that nowadays you pronounce it, pronounce as Jehovah is actually also has H beginning, H at the end. But then uh, they add an, uh, uh, you know, an action sign right there, which I show you uh, as a picture. They add a hand right there. And this is an H, this uh, as a W, this is an H, okay? It is like a hand added, you know, to control this thread right there. But uh, it can be actually be neutral. But um, as time went by, as you can see, it become more and more macho right there. And uh, I will show you later that what this is actually uh, was. This is a female hair. But anyway, um, I continue on. This loss is sound too. Nobody is supposed to say this name. And then in some manuscript in ancient time, in, in the Greek uh, manuscript, you will see they just put four black dots right there. So nobody will actually know how it's pronounced. So the, the Greek 
Greek actually call it the four words. They call it tetragrammaton. So it is actually, they say the four, four letters. So they do not know how to pronounce it. Or sometimes, you know, as Christianity took root more and more, they can write it like this. You know, they put another E right there as the action. Like, Atu, you know, to, you know, this is the A and the O, uh, Alpha and Omega. Again, you know, as the uh, Christian, uh, if you're a Christian, you will know that they always say that God is the uh, Alpha and Omega from the beginning to the end. So actually, it is just uh, expressing uh, subtly, uh, conceptually, uh, the same idea as eternity. So there, or again, you know, there might not be sound right there. So they are just expressing it as beginning or the end. So no matter whether they write it this way or this way or this way or this way, there was no pronunciation. The same like the Chinese, there was no pronunciation. So when people were being shut up, so a lot of things are being transferred and stolen quietly, you know. Okay, so I want to show quickly, you know, this again, you know, these are the Chinese, you know, uh, hieroglyph, Chinese, Greek, and, and ancient uh, Egyptian, um, I mean, ancient, ancient Hebrew. So again, this is the umbilical cord that uh, come around and form the cavity itself. This is the horion and that emptiness. And I show you here, you know, the emptiness and the cord actually become one thing one thing so uh, I used a different color to show you the airy H to the H sound okay and because in Ugaritic they have three air lines showing H sound and the Chinese hey which means air itself and then the Greek actually have the same symbol but they somehow has a K S sound but actually I found that they actually follow an even more ancient tradition. Here it comes. This is the Sumerian showing the earth axis. This is actually the earth goddess. Look at her hair. The hair actually comes from the earth goddess hair right there. And then they understand that it is the, uh, uh, the axis. That's why you will see that writing become the axis itself. And then ancient Hebrew take this as the hair. And then Greek Definitely, this is it. This is it. But then they tell you this is just a vowel because they lost, they hide the H run right there. Because both of this and this are in the fifth position in the uh, alphabetical order. So they should be exactly the same thing. Okay, um, today I think uh, I will stop right here. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. And um, I hope you can go back to YouTube and.